What's up everybody, welcome to Gear Gang Gaming, the place where it's all fun and games. Today's video is my top 10 tips for 7 days to die beginners. This also applies to people that aren't necessarily new but haven't played 7 days to die for a while. Um, if you've played the previous alphas or so, things have changed quite a lot so this probably will apply to you. Even from the earlier alpha 18.1, 2 and 3, things have changed. These tips have no particular order because they're all pretty important really, but they are all things that everybody should know when they're starting this game. So let's go right into it and start off with number 10. Number 10, which probably should be number one because it is the first thing you'll ever do in the game, which is finishing off all the missions that you get set. If you look in the top right corner, you've got craft a bedroll, gather plant fibers, naught out of 10. You've got, I think it's eight missions to complete, then they completely go away from that top right corner and will end with you getting to a trader. Getting to the trader is probably the most important thing to do when you're starting new and fresh and trying to get to grips with the game. Um, it's probably the, well, it is the safest place to be during the daytime, um, which I'll show you later about it. I'm not going to show you how to do these missions. Um, these will be in another video coming out about the same time. Now, there's two reasons why you want to get these missions completed as quickly as you can. The main first reason, which I think is the most important one, is that you get access to four skill points. So if you press tab and then go to this skill section, you'll have four points available here, which you can spend however way you want, depending on how you want to play your game, whether you want to go for hand-to-hand -hand combat, you can go with clubs and javelin master and things like that, or you can go for ranged combat, you can go with guns, you can go with bow and arrows, things like that. Um, you can do whatever you want, whatever you find is best, but th having those four points available near the start of the game can be quite critical and it really helps you out when you've got them. The second reason for it is when you get to the trader you have access to everything that you could, well not everything, but you have access to a hell of a lot of stuff that you could use. Inside the trader it is perfectly safe, zombies cannot get in and out unless you leave the door open which I quite often do. You have access to this shop where you can buy, what hell, there's a tree there, whatever you want. You can see everything in his inventory. You can buy whatever you need. You probably, you won't have access, well, you will have access to it, but you won't be able to buy any of it until you found money. But there are things like the bookcases and sometimes there's a gun safe behind them that if you find lockpicks near the start of the game, if you're lucky enough, you can lockpick and get access to guns really early on. You also ha normally have access to a chemistry station, a workbench, a cement mixer, and a forge over here. Now these can be, quite often, they're broken. But if you loot them anyway, there's a 25% chance of finding a forge, of, well, a schematic for that workbench or forge or chemistry station. So it is definitely wor well worth rushing in and getting here because having access to these things is an amazing head start for you. Number nine, stay away from animals. In general, animals are bad in, ev actually, in general, everything is bad in this game. Animals, for the majority of them, are bad also. But you do have some, like these guys, who are all good sort of. The chicken and the rabbit are very fast. They will run away from you as fast as they can, which is a little bit slower than you can run when you're not encumbered. So you can catch them, but they are difficult. They drain a lot of stamina. An early on, early game, you don't really need the meat that much. Um, you've got the doe and the stag, which are basic, basically the same, but they have a lot more health, but they give you a lot more meat when you do catch them. But they also run away from you if you try and get close to them or you hit them. The boar is a little bit different. The boar is a nasty bleeder. He will only attack you, or she, will only attack you if you attack it, er, uh, he. 
that. If you do attack it, it's going to take a hell of a lot to kill it. These, I've pumped in a dozen arrows and it hasn't killed one of these things and it's managed to kill me in that time. So, general, stay away from them. Don't annoy them. Don't think, yeah, stroking them with a pointy stick will be a good thing because it's definitely not. The next section is everything that will try and attack you, whether you've hurt it, whether you breathed, whether you had nasty thoughts about it, it will go for you. Bears are normally wandering around, just don't get too close to them. These are the, probably one of the most deadly things in the game. They will destroy everything, even when you're quite far into the game, they will kill you. So start the game and you've never faced them before definitely stay away you've got a wolf and a dire wolf dire wolves are considerably bigger stronger faster just better in every single way but both will kill you very easily cougars are very or mountain lions sorry and i call them cougars because that's basically what they are um they will they will kill you as well. It's just a big cat. They can jump. So getting on top of something won't protect you from these guys. A dingo. Or a coyote. Will attack you. But if you attack it back, it will run away. But only for a short amount of time. So don't get complacent if you do get attacked by one of these guys. They will come back and attack you. And these two are... They're not really animals, they're dead, they're zombies, but they will, you'll find them in the worst biomes, in the dead biomes that people don't really want to be in, you'll find loads of these guys, both of them, they're out to get you, they're going to kill you. The dogs, however, you will find in quite a few of the POIs which are points of interest which we'll be going through later. So yeah, stay away from animals. Utilize your bow. You can get sneak damage on these sorts of animals very easily and some things, some things you can actually kill without much difficulty. So if I get a normal attack on a chicken, it does die. If I get a normal attack on a rabbit, it also dies. If I get a normal attack on a on a stag or a doe, it won't kill it. Unless you get really lucky and you destroy its brain. But you'll have a better chance of killing the animal that you're after if you crouch with C and then shoot it. You'll get the sneak damage bonus two times. So you've basically done two times damage in that one shot to that animal. But that also applies to zombies as well. So if you see a shambling zombie around, get a sneak attack on it and you'll do a hell of a lot more damage and you won't have half as much of a problem trying to get rid of it. Number seven is a little bit of circumstantial, but it is use yucca with your water. If you're lucky enough or unlucky enough, depending on how you see it, to start off in a desert biome you will think oh my god what am i going to do here first off you've got access to cactuses when you hit cactus you get plant fibers but when you've got rid of it you also get yucca fruit from them you also get yucca fruit from yucca plants which are a bit easier to get hold of there's loads of them in desert and it's just something that you should also always grab and try and grab as many of the of them as you can because you pretty much need them throughout the game there isn't really a point in the game whether it's early stage late stage where you're not going to need these things because when you mix them with a water bottle they become a hell of a lot better the standard water bottle like you've got to start off with gives you 20 water 15% stamina regen and 3% chance of dysentery so it gives you a little bit of a chance of giving you the poops but you go to recipes and you've got more than two yuccas on you you can create a yucca juice and when you craft this which takes about 16 seconds you get a yucca juice which instead of the 20 water that the, wa the normal bottle of water gives you you get 34 
You also get the same stamina regen, 15%, but you don't get the chance of um, dysentery. So if you are in the desert, definitely go for your yucca. Number six is these beautiful things. Aloe vera plants. Now in the game originally, aloe vera you could use to give you a little bit of health before. Even in the early stages of Alpha 18, it just gave you, uh, I think it's five health. Um, so yeah, it was it was quite good then. But now it is even better. Because when you've got more than, well, when you've got aloe vera and you turn it into aloe gel, or aloe cream, sorry, it does something a little bit more special than it used to. It also stops bleeding. I'm not actually sure what alpha this change took place in, but at some point along the way, it, uh, it went from giving you three health, three max health and five health, to actually stopping bleeding as well. So it actually means that bandages aren't as important as they used to be because you can just run around with aloe cream. You don't need a skill point to use aloe cream. It is something that you can create right from the get-go and you'll never look back after using it. Number five, do not be over-encumbered. Being over-encumbered is possibly one of the worst things that you can do early game. Picking up all these bad things, all these things that you don't want and it completely ruins your day. So like this, I've just given myself full encumbrance with a load of stupid arrows that I don't need, I can't move very fast. Now, this isn't normally a problem, but when you have an issue with, say, a zombie, like this guy, trying to get away from him is going to be a little bit difficult. And he's only shambling. If you've got a pigeon, like that bloody thing up there, or, well, it's actually called a vulture, but... They're death pigeons. They will kill you if they get hold of you. You will lose your balls forever. Never be encumbered. Or try not to be encumbered. and Definitely not completely encumbered. Because it will end your life. Number four. Nerd polling will not save you. You've got a zombie after you. You might think, like in some games like Minecraft and stuff like that. I can't get away from this guy. I'm going to have to jump. And getting away from him like this, you think would be the best way of doing it. But zombies will break this floor away from you. They won't just try and get away and get round it and then wait for you to jump down at some point. They will just destroy the blocks underneath you, underneath you and it won't end well for you. Especially on things like a horde night where you've got multiple zombies after you. These things will absolutely tear your blocks a new one. Number three. POIs can be good, but they can also be bad for you. When you're first start starting off, POIs are great. And by POIs, we mean points of interest, which are all prefabricated buildings inside the game. The smaller they are, they are often the better. Especially when you're first starting off and you're just looking for a place to hide during the night time when you've got zombies sprinting. But they all have their highs and lows. The smaller they are, the less zombies they have inside them. Like this one, it's got probably a handful, one or two, if that. There doesn't seem to be any in this one. Uh, there we go, there's one here. I just killed him. And it, oh, there's one on the one on here. Okay, yeah, of course, I would miss that one. Um, but they, that's not the only issue with POIs. A lot of POIs will have traps inside them. They'll have false floors. They'll have zombies in the rooftops. So if I uh, just set them all to scary and chasing after me, it might have some drop. No, nope, none in this one. I was lucky. But yeah, all POIs should be treated with a little bit of care because, again, it's something that can really finish you off, especially in the bigger POIs like uh, the building sites and things like that. 
you will have a lot of zombies you will have a lot of traps inside there where the game is just trying to kill you even if you haven't got zombies after you number two finding honey as you're playing through the game you'll no doubt find that zombies are hitting you and they're not very nice they cause you all sorts of problems they make you bleed they cause you pain but they'll also do something that's not very friendly at all and that is they will infect you and that can be terrible as you can see in my bottom left corner above my health and all that sort of stuff you'll see a nuclear waste symbol which is bad in general anyway and it's got a percentage next to it this means that i am infecting i have a mild infection you have a mild infection infection will get worse until treated by antibiotics now antibiotics aren't the only thing that can treat this you can get herbal antibiotics which will fix it but you can also get honey now honey is normally quite an easy thing to find actually you can find it by looting you can find get it from doing missions for your trader you can do it a lot of ways but the easiest ways to do it early on are by hitting tree trunks like that one but with a little more success you don't always get them there is i think it's about 33 percent chance of getting one um, but you do find these spread out throughout the map you'll find them in all the different uh, not all of the different biomes actually no you'll find them in the grass biome You'll find them in the snow biome. The snow biome, you'll find a hell of a lot of them. And you'll also find them in the burnt biome. You won't find them in the wastelands and you won't find them in the deserts. But every single one, you should be attacking these beautiful little pieces of joy. Because every time you get infected, you will need to use some of this honey. They honey only cures five percent so if you go over that five percent it won't cure you completely then you will be looking at some antibiotics because they cure 25 percent and i think oh the herbal antibiotics cure 10 percent as well the chances of you finding these are much less than the than the jar of honey so i do recommend that every time you find a tree trunk just attack it attack it attack it attack it and keep getting every one that you find even if it means you have a whole stash of them it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it last and no means least is surviving the horde night it's not too difficult the first horde night is always relatively easy it's depending on uh, your game stage which if you press tab and go to players right at the end it will tell you your game stage like i'm only level one my game stage is level two the zomb the amount of zombies and how difficult the zombies are is going to be very very low i know it looks scary with the well it's looking pink at the moment but it will get very dark red and you'll get lots of thunder and lightning going on and the zombies will be sprinting after you they know where you are so you can't hide from them anymore um so it is a little bit worrying but the easy way of surviving is you find a building like this it's this one's a popping pills but the working stiffs and uh, the cracker books and all those sorts of buildings similar size to this they all have a very similar layout they've all got a flat roof with only one way up to the roof which is a ladder and there's one little really quick tip is to get rid of the bottom two rungs of the ladder now you will be able to jump up to the ladder and climb up but zombies they will not they won't be able to climb this ladder so they'll start that trying to break their way through the building and all of these walls have got 500 health so in one horde night where you're probably going to be able to get a maximum maybe six seven maybe eight zombies if you unless you've changed the frequency of the horde um the frequency of how many zombies come in one horde sorry um you're they're not going to be able to bring this building down 
it takes them a hell of a long time. And I, honestly, I don't think it, that'll happen on the second or third night either. Maybe on the fourth, but you'll be a much better player by then. See, so it's getting bloody dark and red already now. So get up top here. Unless you fancy taking the zombies on hand to hand, uh, which I don't recommend unless you've got a bit more experience fighting them and you're not scared about dying. That is my list of 10 tips for beginners playing 7 Days to Die. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been useful for you. Um, I will be doing some other videos like this at some point. But for now, get cracking those zombie skulls open. And remember to keep it all fun and games. Goodbye. Goodbye.